Hello and welcome. This is CER, Ways to Strengthen Analysis and Writing Skills in Science. So today you're going to learn about a method called CER, and you're going to learn how to help your students strengthen their analysis and writing skills using this method. Before we get started, a little bit about me. My name is Kristen Muse. I have over 15 years experience working with upper elementary students. I have a master's degree in literacy. On top of my master's degree, I have over 90 credits, most of that being in science and some of it in technology. I live at home with my husband and we have a furry child named Samson. And in my free time, I like to paint, go for walks with Samson and go out to dinner. So what is CER? For those of you wondering, CER is a method that is often used in science that will organize the way students think in a nice structured way. CER stands for Claim, Evidence, and Reasoning. The reason why we use CER is because since the implementation of the Next Generation Science Standards, we need a way to help students argue about their thinking. CER aligns with the science and engineering practices, which build upon, upon our students' ability to ask questions, analyze and interpret data, construct explanations, and also, more importantly, argue their evidence. This is also aligned with common core state standards. Um, in some of the state standards, our students need to write arguments based on a discipline-specific content. So in my case, I'm using this in science to introduce a claim about a topic or issue and then support that claim with logical reasoning and relevant, accurate data and evidence. This writing also helps teachers understand where students' misconceptions in science may lie. So the first part of this method is stating a claim. One thing that I really enjoy about this and that my students enjoy is this method is like a formula. So the students will follow the formula to come up with their explanation. And the formula can range um, in length depending on the student. So if you have students that may be a little bit of a lower level learner, they can't really um, make those higher level thinking um, connections, their responses may be only about five sentences, where other students may have responses that are about seven sentences. And this can also vary depending on the concepts that you're learning about. But the first part of the CER method is the stating a claim. So a claim is a statement that simply is going to answer the question. This should only be one sentence in length. The claim does not include an explanation, does not include reasoning or evidence. Um, there's no transition words. This is just simply stating what, the, what they think the answer is to that question. So I have posters back here. Um, an example of a question that you may want to ask your students is, do cells have different shapes? So the student's claim for that question would just simply be cells have different shapes. And that's it. They will further elaborate on this in the next two um, areas. So other examples of a claim would be a chemical change occurred. Simple machines make work easier. My dad is not an alien, and Cheryl's husband burned down the she shed. For the, those last two, I will explain a little bit later in the presentation. Um, but what I do like about this method is it does is, is not specific to just science. For those of you that are not departmentalized and you also are teaching ELA, this works wonderfully in that area as well. Um, you know, for students that have to write argument essays, this is a great um, formula that they can also use in that area. The next step to this is evidence. So evidence is going to be the data that's used to support the claim. And this area, it should be about one to two sentences in length. The students are going to use data that directly supports their claim. So they're not using that erroneous data that does not match what their claim is. They're just using the data that supports what they think is happening. So examples of evidence could include qualitative or quantitative. So that's either numerical evidence or a descriptor type of evidence. 
they can get this from their data tables or from just direct observations if you're doing a demonstration in the classroom. Examples of how evidence can be written in a, in a CER statement. Um, so what I like to do when I'm teaching about chemical and physical changes, I usually bring in glow sticks. Um, so we can talk about a glow stick, whether or not that is a chemical or a physical change. So an example of the, how they're going to pull out that evidence that's going to support their claim would be when the glow stick was cracked open, it changed color, it was bright green, okay? that could be and you can see that's two sentences so they're explaining what happened and changed color the color that it changed to was bright green um if you can again do this when we're watching the commercial so this is some evidence that the students can pull out um i've used this with whether or not texting while driving is dangerous so most likely their their claim would be that texting while driving is dangerous and then this is some of the evidence that they would have pulled out to support that claim. Now, when they're writing their response, they don't necessarily need to use all of this evidence. They could choose the strongest evidence to support their claim. Um, and you can tell students that, you know, here we have four, one, two, three, we have four pieces of evidence. They could include all of that, or they can just include one or two pieces. I do like to say the more evidence you have, the more that it will, um, support your your response but it also depends upon you know some students will see this and then with the writing it may deter them a little bit but you could just have them get all the evidence down and then choose which pieces they want to include in their response reasoning this is the area that the students often have the most difficulty with so reasoning is an explanation of why and how the evidence is supporting the claim Reasoning should be about two to three sentences in length, and it needs to include scientific concepts that students are learning about. So in the beginning of the year, if you're just teaching this, a lot of times I will do this with commercials um, and, and just real life things that are around us. That seems to be, um, it, it, that's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to bring in a scientific concept. However, when you're learning about chemical and physical changes or you're learning about plant and animal cells, you can remind students, okay, now you need, this is where you're bringing in that knowledge that you have about that topic into your reasoning section. So if they were talking about their original claim that we spoke about earlier, that cells have different shapes, well, this is where they're going to bring in their knowledge about a plant and animal cells having different shapes. Um, when you're talking about chemical and physical changes, when you have the glow stick and it changed color, that's one of the characteristics of a chemical change. So this is where they are going to be um, extracting that knowledge that they have about the scientific topic and they're going to be putting it in writing. So this allows you to see a couple different things. This allows you to see if they understand the concepts that, you're, that they should be learning about. And a lot of times there's misconceptions in the different scientific topics that we teach. So you can see whether or not they still have that misconception or whether or not they are able to understand fully about that topic. Um, so some examples, this is how it can be written. So we were talking about chemical and physical changes. An example of how a reasoning statement could be written is color change is one indicator of a chemical change. When the glow stick turned bright green, it was an example of a chemical change, not a physical change. Um, they could have went on to add a physical change is when an object changes its size or shape. They could have elaborated a little bit more, but this does bring in that scientific knowledge that they have. Um, also, if we're talking about that previous example about texting and driving um it could texting while driving is dangerous because it distracts you from what is happening on the road texting while driving can hurt or kill yourself and other innocent people around you so again that's not really bringing in any scientific evidence but it is connecting that claim to the evidence that the students had so what i like to do is i have a poster where the students will have the formula written out for them and I give this, I have like student sheets sized. 
um, so that they can put this in their reading notebook or I'm sorry, in their science notebook so that they can refer back to it. And this is how to write a CER response. So this goes over what they need to be doing. And it lets them know that their response can be between three and seven sentences. If they're writing one sentence for each of the parts, it's gonna be three. If they're elaborating a little bit more on the evidence and the reasoning, then it may be seven. Um, but I, I feel like letting them know that I'm not looking for a big long paragraph, I'm really just looking to make sure you know what it is that you're talking about. In, in a way that's going to include evidence to support your claim and reasoning to show that you understand the scientific concepts. So this sheet is great for them to have to refer back to. I also have this hanging in my classroom so that the students can refer to it in the classroom. Okay, so this I like to show my students. Um, hold on, I'm going to... I don't know why it can't be embedded, but I'm gonna show you this on here. This is a fun commercial for the students to start out with learning about CER. See, oh, hold on. Okay. So it's only 30 seconds in length. A lot of times what I will do is we'll watch this, we'll watch it a couple times, and we'll really walk through the claim evidence reasoning parts as we think about this commercial. So there's a couple of things going on in this commercial that the students may not pick, on the, pick up on the first time that they see this. Um, the question that I would be asking the students for them to be able to make a claim upon would be what happened to Cheryl she shed. So now they're going to come up with a claim. Who do they think, what do they think happened to it? You know, I, I've used this before and I've gotten a multi multitude of different responses where lightning hit it, um, you know, Cheryl left something on inside the she shed that made it go on fire. The husband did it because he couldn't stand that she was in there and not cooking food. They could come up with a variety of different um, responses. There really is no right response, but the thing is that they're going to have to back this up with evidence. So if they're going to say something like they think that it was struck by lightning, they're gonna to have to pull out evidence from that commercial that's going to support what their claim is. So some things that I like to point out when we're watching this is it doesn't necessarily, it's hard to see the weather. But if you look here, you can see, I like to point out this, because in, in my opinion, I think the husband did it. But he is, watering the lawn granted not a lot of water is coming out however they're just kind of sitting there you know he has that oh you know like he doesn't really care he's not jumping into action and trying to save the she jet and nor is he trying to put any water on the fire so that could be some evidence and reasoning that they're going to add to their cer statement this is really a, a fun little video for the for them to use to start out with Okay, so as I said earlier, what I would do is I would provide the students with that question, what happened to the she shed, and then we're going to have a class discussion. Um, one of the materials that you're going to get is this graphic organizer. So this graphic organizer helps them to brainstorm and sequence everything that they need to have on here. So we start with the problem. The problem would be the question that is being posed what happened to the she shed, which is what they would fill in here. Then they can come up with their hypothesis. I usually like them to have come up with a hypothesis and observations. The observations are what they would eventually be using as their evidence. But, you know, sometimes we have a hypothesis, but if we were watching something like that commercial a couple times, it could change. 
So I'd like them to get their first ideas down to see that it, it is possible for hypotheses to change and that is a-okay. Um, but it is also is important for them to have some observations down. And then after we've watched that a couple times, maybe we've discussed it, then they're going to fill in their claim. So that's going to be what their, their answer is to the question. Use the evidence from this observation table to include here and then come up with their reasoning. And this is a nice little graphic organizer that can be used whether you are doing something like a commercial or whether you're using a scientific context. Okay, so this is gonna walk you through. This is where the problem, sometimes it's called a question, but as we know, a question is usually the problem that you're trying to solve in science. Hypothesis is their guess. It's okay for them to guess something and then have their claim be completely different because what you're really looking at is what that claim and evidence is going to be. Their observations are going to serve as their data of what they will use as evidence to support their answer. And then this is their claim. So their claim is their answer to that problem. Evidence is where they're gonna support that and they wanna kinda of have about two sentences in there. And then the reasoning is their explanation. How is that evidence connecting to that claim to answer it? So I hope that this method helps you out. I, it has done wonders in my classroom because it allows the students to write out their thinking. It's gonna also strengthen writing and analysis skills, which they need across the board, not just in science. And from the student side, I found that they really love the formula. It takes the guesswork out of what they need to do and then it makes them feel confident because they know as long as I have covered the claim, evidence, and reasoning and I have this information in there, then I should be good to go. Um, other resources that you can use, especially if you want to practice more, um, you can look on the National Science Teacher Association, the NSTA. They have great um, lessons that you can use. You can use um, websites that you can have them go on, like a website like does knuckle cracking lead to arthritis and they can pull out some information from there. Um, this is a pretty cool reference chart that the students can use, um, or I'm sorry, that you can use Then This lets you know for whatever grade level that you're on, what the student should be able to do in their claim, evidence and reasoning. Um, everything you want to know about CER, that you can come to my blog and I have everything on here. I have multiple blog posts um, and I will give you the links to this of all about CER, how to put it in your science classroom. You can incorporate it into the holidays, um, science lessons that you already have that are existing. You can just use this to go along with it and you don't have to rework the entire wheel. And then if you want things that are already made and good to go on teacher to pay teachers i have if you want the posters that i have behind me i have all materials here that will walk you through um i have the teacher tips this will definitely walk you through sometimes it's a little bit easier to have something written out for you to be able to follow um group expectations i have everything that you would need to go on here um, and including, you know, different versions of the posters. Some of them are a little less wordy than the others, which may be better for different types of students. So I thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about the CER method. I hope that this helps you out in your classroom. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, um that are still just gnawing at you you can feel free to email me at kristin at teachingnews.com um, or you can go to my blog and get more information and that is teachingmuse.com or check out my store which is also teachingmuse on teachers have a great day everyone